Hey, what's up soldiers? My name is Greg FPS, the Zombies Extraordinaire, and welcome to my full Easter egg guide that is extremely detailed for the tortured path in Call of Duty World War II Zombies. This is DLC 3. Now, this DLC was definitely a little bit different because there's three different maps that each have their own Easter egg, and you have to complete them in a public lobby all in like simultaneously back to back to back in order to actually end up getting the cutscene and fully completing the easter egg now for each map you get a camo and you also get an achievement so i'm going to go through and show you guys exactly what you need to do for each and every map and overall i actually really enjoy the easter eggs i think they're fantastic uh, especially the first two maps and I really think that this DLC was kind of overshadowed by some people saying that the DLC was bad but honestly I think it was probably one of the best DLCs that we have seen in World War II Zombies so I really hope you guys do enjoy the video it's been a ton of time to put this list all together for you guys and make this tutorial so I really hope it does help you out if it does please drop a like and subscribe if you're new and if you do end up subscribing let me know down below let's get started so we're gonna start off on into the storm and the first thing that you need to do is you need to go over here to this tree through the windmill and shoot off this rope now once you do that you have to find body parts here are all the body part locations. First body part is the head. It can be right on the tailgate of that truck. Now there are five different locations for the head. The second location can be here on top of this shelf right here. And as you can see in my game, it was located right there. The third location is going to be at, on the first post of the fence right outside of the windmill. And it's just gonna be sitting right there on top next to the rope. Now the fourth location is going to be inside of a shelf that is located right inside of the SMG wall by room right there. And the fourth and final location can be located in the room that has the wine cellar or in the building. And it's located in the middle pot that is within the sink. So it's just gonna be sitting right in there. All right, guys, now we're gonna be getting the torso. Now there's five locations for this. One of them is in the fireplace right there that has the cellar. The second location is going to be located right on over here in the cart that is upside down right on top of it. That one's really, really easy to see. The third one can be up here in the window. As you can see, it was there in my game, literally directly above Pack-a-Punch. Now the third or fourth location rather is going to be located in the cart that's kind of like a wheelbarrow i guess that's backwards leaning up against the wall and the fifth and final location is going to be located inside of a crate that is made out of wood right in there so those are all five locations for the torso now we're going to take a look at all the hand locations one of them is grabbing onto that basket the second location is going to be down here between the pallet and the stairs right there the third location is going to be located right outside of the map like right out that fence the fourth location is going to be inside of the fireplace that is in the smg wall by room the fifth location is going to be right next to the stamina variant in world war ii zombies right there the sixth location is going to be in the can box as you can see it was there in my game the seventh location is going to be located on the wood pile that has some logs it's right there now the eighth location is going to be located inside of the fireplace as you can see it was there in my game the ninth location is inside the debris sticking out and the tenth location is going to be right there in the flower box that was a really hard to commentate now we're going to be taking a look at all 10 of the leg locations so we're going to go into the room with the cellar first now the first location is going to be located right outside of one of these wine racks the second location is going to be located on the front of the driver's side of the truck the third location is going to be sitting right there against the painting the fourth location is going to be sticking out of the wall right there where the hole is the fifth location is going to be underneath this shelf right here and it's going to be like on the ground right there the sixth location is going to be sitting on the post of the fence that one's really easy to see the seventh location is going to be down there right in front of the fence the eighth location is inside the flower pot the ninth location is hanging down from the debris and the tenth location is in the flower pot on the opposite side in the front of the building that has a lot of debris 
All right, guys, so now you're going to go back over to the riverside, and the rope that you shot into the river is actually going to be snagged on a branch that's sticking out. So what you're going to do is just keep holding square or X, and you're going to end up grabbing the rope that was hanging inside of the river. So once you have the rope and you have all the body parts, the next round, there's going to be two metal poles that end up getting stuck in the ground over here. One of them is right next to the cow, and the other one is directly next to the military vehicle so you're gonna grab both of those and then you're gonna be pretty much all set to stop the windmill but first you need to get a whistling zombies arm to stick in the windmill gears so how you actually end up getting this arm is you have to run a whistling into another whistling and this was the easiest step that we found um, some other people have gone a different ways just from killing whistlings but for me it was much much easier just to run another whistling into another whistling and the whistling that gets hit will just fall over and die and the arm is gonna fall on the ground. So what you gotta do is grab the arm and this arm is going to be placed inside the gears within the windmill and stop the windmill. Now, there are two different locations where you have to stop the windmill exactly. And this is probably the trickiest part, I would say. So as you can see, I'm gonna go up to the windmill gears and hold square. It's going to stop it. And as you can see, it was right here now this is not the correct position it has to be exactly perfect so as you can see here i was doing this solo i'm gonna splice in solo and co-op steps throughout this entire video so just be aware i was trying to get the best possible like gameplay for each clip so you guys could understand exactly what to do so as you can see here i stopped the windmill perfectly and what you're going to do is go up to it and press square and the zombie and all the parts are going to be stuck there with the rope and the metal rods so now what you need to do is actually turn the windmill 180 degrees so that it's perfectly straight up and what this is going to do is cause the zombie to be 100 percent upside down so it's really not that bad but it can get a little bit tricky because it has to be perfectly straight and sometimes the windmill rocks side to side so just be get it exactly like it is right here in the gameplay and as you can see it's perfectly straight up and you can kind of line it up with the doorway and once you do that you can kill the other zombies that you have remaining now if you're playing in a co-op game you can count it down for your friends like three two one go and then that is when they would place in the whistling arm. So next round, there's gonna be a lightning strike and it's gonna cause the zombie to fall to the ground. And now the zombie is gonna be a soul chest. So what you need to do is kill a bunch of zombies around where the zombie fell. Now in my particular game on round six, it's a challenge round. So I ended up doing the challenge while my other teammates were just shooting a bunch of zombies near the other zombie and filling it with souls so we happened to get air defense so it was my job to get the challenge basically done now in my game i got three out of four and then i waited for the last one so that we could get a bunch of kills now you want to try to get as many kills as possible around the zombie and usually when you're doing the easter egg you don't get a challenge that requires all the players to just kill zombies and stuff it usually isn't that bad sometimes you can get unlucky and you have to kill like bomb zombies for example and in that case you would just get a bunch of kills with everyone right at that location to fill the zombie up with souls and there's really no like maximum amount it just keeps going so you just want to get as many kills as possible the best thing to do is throw jack in the boxes right there and it's really really easy to fill up that way and I just found that it was pretty easy overall so the next round after you've completed the challenge the zombie is going to resurrect from the dead as you can see here it's just going to directly rise up and what you have to do is escort this zombie to the other side of the map now this is definitely one of the hardest steps if not the hardest of the entire easter egg on all the maps because what you have to do is make sure that there are no bomb zombies that blow up next to it so what you can do is you can have people on your team run frontline 
so that the zombies are attracted to them and have them be on the complete opposite side of the map so you don't have to worry about the zombie getting hit. Another great thing to do is run insta kills and just shoot every single zombie. Now, as you can see, I did speed this up a little bit because the zombie does walk fairly slow and it does take about a minute. Now be careful because in the bushes, a bunch of bomb zombies spawn. So you wanna be really, really careful that a bomb zombie doesn't blow up next to it. Now you can shoot the Tesla gun and things like that and it won't actually blow up the bomb zombies but if you use explosive weapons like the bacon and eggs then it will cause the bombs to explode on the bomb zombies and thus could end up killing the zombie now it's going to crawl inside of this little hole right here and then you're on to the next round so the next round the zombie is going to walk out of that same hole it crawled into and it's going to be holding a fuse that's red now you need this fuse so what you need to do is once again escort the zombie and once again it can get blown up by bomb zombies so be really really careful and it's going to be a moving soul chest so now you have to get a bunch of kills around the zombie and basically just keep walking it now we found a really good strategy and as you can see smart guy is standing directly in front of the zombie so that it doesn't move very far and it turns out that it doesn't matter how many kills you get but it matters how far the zombie actually gets so the more kills you get the longer it's going to last the zombie's going to stay alive longer so what we did was we just blocked the doorway so it couldn't get in and we had one more zombie eventually kill the other zombie until it dropped the fuse so it was kind of weird to explain it that way but basically you just need to get a lot of kills and then have another zombie kill the zombie and as you can see i picked up the fuse and i'm going to go down to the winery which is down below I'm going to place this fuse inside of the fuse box right here and the cabinet is going to open up and then I can buy, grab the hilt of Barbarossa. So that is the first map into the storm chapter one. Now we're going to go on to the next one. But before we do that, there is a boss fight called the Rakuten Brenner and you need to kill this Brenner as fast as possible. Now there's going to be red rings that go around and then eventually blow up. So you want to make sure the Rakuten Brenner is inside of that. And I recommend pack punching the SAPs. A, this thing literally melts them. As you can see, we're all just wrecking it and it died so quickly. It was really, really easy. And you're going to see me use the exact same weapon for all the boss fights just because it makes it so much easier overall and last but not least you do have to escape so you want to make sure that all your teammates are inside of the circle when the circle shows up and eventually you'll get like the victory screen and all that stuff and you'll move on to the next map now doing this in public match can be a little bit annoying but uh if you have a good team of friends it makes it so much easier so i'd highly recommend just having a team of friends to help you with this for sure so as you can see we ended up completing it we got the victory screen and then we're going to go on to across the depths next so let's jump into it all right guys so across the depths is the most challenging map in my opinion so you want to be really careful while you're doing this easter egg you really need to be cautious of the bomb zombies and the zombies can teleport once you're in the vision mode so the first thing you need to do is get the vision mode so you go all the way down to the bottom level of the barracks in the bottom level of the boat and you knife or melee this uber schnall and you're going to get the vision mode which basically gives you a further out point of view and it's a little bit weird uh, you feel a little distorted you need to shoot fish the first one was there the next one is up on that shelf the third location is going to be up here there's nine by the way the fourth location is going to be outside of this window the fifth location is going to be on top of this barrel and you can hear them flopping if you lose the location the next one is right up there now we still have three more uh the next one is going to be at the end of the hallway this is the seventh location the eighth location is going to be right on top of like piping i guess and that's right there and the last and final one is going to be in a wooden crate right there so you're going to shoot all of those make sure you shoot them all because if you don't your the next step won't work next a red herring is going to spawn and what you need to do is basically escort this one to a specific location now this red herring is not going to die but you are going to have to escort it like between rounds it's probably the best time but uh watch out for zombies by the way 
and you're going to end up going right here. It's going to disappear into smoke and then a charging station for an Uber Schnall is going to pop up right there and we're going to show you exactly how to get the Uber Schnall. So there's six different locations. One of them is right here and as you can see it costs 3000 points. One of them is right here and it's kind of sticking out right there. Uh, the third location is going to be right next to the quick revive machine, which is right here. The next one is underneath this boat. And then there's two more on the lower deck. Now, one of them is going to be right in here. Now you want to watch out for the trucks because they do move. And the other one is going to be floating next to the first pack a bunch charging station. So what you have to do is buy the Uber Schnall for 3000 points and you're going to end up bringing it to the actual charging station that the red herring did spawn so as you can see we're going to go here we're going to take a right and it's at the end of the hallway now what you're going to have to do is get a bunch of kills until the red herring moves so anything that can help you like frontline insta kills you want to use jack in the boxes anything like that uh free fire can help as well you just want to be really careful as you can see i went down and the red herring did start to move so what you want to do is escort the red herring to the next location and this one is going to be directly next to like the next room over from the pack punch machine so you're going to take a right right here and then it's like straight ahead it's at the end of the room now once again guys insta kills are extremely good so if you have insta kill uh consumables i would definitely recommend using them if you have nukes those can help and full meters or uber ladens are really nice as well so as you can see once again the charging station for the uber schnall spawns so we're gonna buy it and once again we're at another location this time we're gonna go through the bottom floor instead now it doesn't really matter i just decided to go this way because the top was being blocked by a truck so as you can see we're just gonna follow the exact location or path that the uh, red herring took and we're gonna go place it inside of the charging station once again so what you basically have to do is do this step one more time after this and you're just gonna keep getting a bunch of kills and it does take a while it's not something that you can do extremely quickly uh, because you do have to get a good amount of kills probably about 25 or so I would guess uh, the next one we're gonna grab another uber schnall and we're gonna go all the way over and this one is going to be actually right at the bottom of the stairs. So you don't have to go too far. And you're going to place it. Now at this point, what you want to do is pack a bunch of gun. Now I recommend pack a bunch of the 9mm SAP. This is by far the best weapon because the pistol actually turns into a handheld shotgun. Which actually destroys zombies so easily. So you're going to pack a bunch of weapon. And then you're going to go back over and end up filling up the last and final uber schnall now the reason you want to pack a bunch is because you are going to have a somewhat of a challenge filling this one and also you need it for the next step as well after this so that's why you're going to pack a bunch once again do the nine millimeter sap by far the best gun in the game in my opinion and a lot of other people's opinion so the screen's going to end up turning black and you're going to go underwater now what you have to do is jump from this platform to another platform and then finally a last platform now this platform is going to have dr Schraub kind of pop up as a hologram and once he's done talking he's going to disappear and a whistling zombie and a bunch of other zombies are going to spawn and what you have to do is kill them once you kill them another platform will spawn and you can jump to the next one this next one is going to be dr Schraub yet again but this time from the darkest shore he's going to say a quote and then a meister a moochler is going to spawn and a bunch of other zombies so you want to take all of them out you will get a max ammo on this one so the next time you jump to the next platform and then one more platform and this one is going to be the shadow throne and once again dr Schraub is going to spawn and you actually see his death scene which is super super cool and you need to kill all the zombies that spawn there and last but not least you jump to the last platform and there's going to be a red herring floating right in the middle now this one is really cool because there's buckets that spawn there's three buckets on the first one and the red herring is going going to go in one of them so what you have to do is actually follow the bucket with your eyes and see where it ends up so in this one it ended up right here so you want to shoot it 
or you can melee it it doesn't really matter and as you can see the red herring is there so we completed phase one there's three phases the second phase ends up having more buckets and this time it's going to go a little bit faster so this one actually ends up having five buckets and the red herring is going to go inside one of them and it's going to move and once again you want to follow the bucket to exactly where it goes so that you get it correctly and once again it was this one right here so we're going to shoot it it's going to tip upside down and a fish is going to spawn if you end up getting it wrong then a whistling zombie or a moochler or meckler or meister meckler i don't i still don't know how to say that zombie's name is going to spawn the next one the final phase has eight buckets this one goes super fast and it's really really difficult so maybe i would recommend recording it or something to slow it down so you know exactly where it is or if you're streaming on twitch you can kind of like clip it i guess and play it slower so in our game it was this one right here we ended up getting it first try sometimes it doesn't happen and you have some trouble so as you can see there we got it and now we're going to get teleported directly back to the map so as you can see there's a wooden box and you grab the pommel of barbarossa and also if you've completed all the easter eggs in public match the sword will spawn there as well now last but not least you have to get to wave 10 and you have to kill the stat jager now as you can see we're using the nine millimeter sap all of us in the game and we end up killing this thing really really fast so it is by far the best weapon in the game once again so you need to kill this boss zombie uh, as fast as possible and then once again you have to escape from the map now the stat jager has a really weird animation once you end up getting like all the damage on it it actually ends up shooting itself in the head which is really weird and it commits suicide and has like a weird animation so uh it is pretty dang cool this is probably one of the easier boss fights i'd say especially with the nine millimeter so as you can see here it's kind of just chilling here it's going to shoot itself in the head and then it's going to like move all around and eventually fall over and uh yeah it just looks awesome so then once again you escape just like you did on the other maps and now it's time to go on to chapter three beneath the ice which is the last and final map let's get right into it all right guys so first thing you want to do on the beneath the ice map which is chapter three is you want to fill up the pack-a-punch uber schnall so that you can charge up pack-a-punch and eventually unlock it on round seven but once you do that you want to go to the middle of the map and this is like a pretty circular map so right in the middle there's going to be a couple like four heads and it just looks circular overall and basically you want to go over to this uber schnall over here and you want to melee it three times and what that allows you to do is next round go into the vision mode on all of the even rounds if you knife it on round one so what I decided to do was actually show you guys a shortcut so you don't really have to work hard and on screen is 15 different combinations of what the code can be that you have to enter into the door now what I would recommend is just entering all of them now once you enter eight different combinations it resets so for example I do and I X B M which is the top line and then it didn't work so I need to press letters three more times and then eight will reset it completely so what you want to do is just enter all these different combinations and eventually one of them will work now what I recommend if you want to do it the normal way and I guess the legit way is go to round two go in the vision mode and you have to look around the map for the actual code that is going to be written on the wall now in my game right here as you guys can see in the background of the gameplay that's what i'm doing but i recommend brute forcing the door and just continuously entering these codes until you get it correctly because you're going to be able to finish it on round one instead of round two and you can just end up doing the entire easter egg much faster which is definitely in my opinion the best way to do it and also if you do it around earlier you don't have to deal with whistlings on round five you can enter or do the hardest step on round four so i would recommend just entering all these different codes until you get it correct and uh once you do that then you're pretty much set now you will have to enter three codes so just refer back to this point in the video or you guys can screenshot it or something like that i'll also leave a link down in the description if you want to look at that but let's get on to the next step of the easter egg 
all right guys so the next step is you are going to enter the codes and as you can see here smart guy is going to enter one of the codes and it is going to be correct and you're going to see the entire thing light up red and you know you've entered it correctly so as you can see right there it lights up red and boom now you can go on to the next round and what's going to happen is a care package is going to drop in and this is from the bat agents and you can actually open it up and what you're going to get is the hilt of barbarossa that you already got on the first map into the storm so what you want to do is grab the hilt and you're going to go to the middle of the map and there are three bowls and one of them is going to be lit up red so what you're going to do is place the hilt of barbarossa right in there and boom you're all set now you go over here and as you can see there's an earthquake and boom a box of flares falls to the ground now you are going to need to use those flares and throw them in five specific locations so you pick up the flares and you go to the middle of the map and there's a bunch of head statues sticking out and what you have to do is basically grab the flares look up throw it at the statue it's going to fall inside of the bowl so you need to do this for all four of them now there was a common misconception that you had to throw them at the bowls that was right next to the door where you enter the code you actually don't have to uh, so this is definitely a little bit easier you don't have to worry about throwing flares as much now you do have to replenish them each and every time you need more flares so just keep that in mind and basically you want to do this as fast as possible because the bowls will eventually get unlit with fire and it is kind of time based you need to make sure you do it quickly and as you can see we're going to throw the last flare in right here for the middle area now we go over and we are going to throw it in a bowl as well as you can see we're going to go right over here and there is a bowl right here now this one's kind of tricky you got to throw it at an angle and as you can see i eventually get it to go in and boom we're going to light that ember on fire now a secret wall is going to open up on the side and you are actually going to get one of the runes that you need to place in the door so we're going to grab that and we're going to make our way over to the wall and this is the exact same wall that you enter the code in and there is basically a block missing so what you want to do is just directly enter it into the bottom area right here as you can see and now you need to enter another code once you enter another code you can do it the same way refer back to that part in the video then another care package is going to spawn on the next round so if you're doing it early on like me on round three you get the next one and now we got the pummel of barbarossa and we are going to go and place it in the bowl that is lit up red just like the last one that we just did so as you can see we're going to go and place it so now we have two out of the three parts for barbarossa's sword and last but not least this is the hardest part there are four different platforms around the map now what you need to do is everyone on your team has to stand on one of the platforms that is all the way up if there's three, only three platforms will be up. If there's one player, only one platform will be up. And you have to stand on all of them and basically get kills for around about a minute. Now, you will hear an audio cue once you're done, which is really, really easy to hear. But I would recommend using insta kills and free fire while you're doing this, just because you can get it done much, much faster. Now, in this gameplay, I was playing it for a complete minute. It really doesn't take that long. But once again, just use insta kills. That makes it so much easier because every zombie that you see, you can shoot. And once again, like I mentioned, you want to do it in an early round as possible because whistling spawn in on round five so in my gameplay here i was doing it on round four and also run insta kill consumables i would highly recommend that it makes everything so so much easier and it's just a more enjoyable experience when you don't really have to worry too much so as you can see we ended up getting the audio cue and basically those heads that were in the middle part of the map they're going to be pouring out blood out of their mouth so what you actually need to do is get the pummel that was stuck inside one of the mouths of the four heads. So now, as you can see, there's like blood all over the middle and basically you're filling those different platforms with blood. So it would go to the middle of the map. So now we're looking for the 
four or the third rune rather and we're gonna find it on the ground as you can see it is right here so we're gonna grab that and we are gonna go all the way back to the door and once again we are gonna enter this into the spot that it's supposed to be on the door and last but not least we have to enter one more code so once again just refer back to the codes that i showed you before that's all 15 codes you shouldn't have to worry and as you can see here we are going to enter the code and last but not least the final care package is going to drop and this time it's going to be the blade of barbarossa's sword so we're going to grab this and as you can see blade of barbarossa we're going to go to the middle of the map and once again we are actually going to place this blade in the bowl that is lit up red now we have the option to actually craft the sword of barbarossa so you just hold square and it assembles it and it's really cool like the animation is really cool you see the guys craft energy and it kind of like spins around and like crafts the sword it looks awesome and this was definitely a hype moment of the easter egg when people figured this out for the first time it was super super cool so then you get the sword of barrosa now personally i think that the sword kind of sucks which is unfortunate but uh anyways guys let's finish up the easter egg so the next thing and final thing you have to do is defeat the guardian which is the final boss on the last map beneath the ice now this boss really isn't that hard but the thing that you need to worry about is that he can recharge health by sucking up blood from the middle area so you have to actually shoot the heads when he's sucking up blood as you can see he gains some health and once again we use the nine millimeter saps and just absolutely destroyed him there's one mod that you can use on um the special different abilities and one of them is three times and another one is two times damage so you can absolutely destroy him and then you, finally at the end you escape and boom yeah that is the entire easter egg and this is the final cutscene that you get if you guys have any questions ask me on twitter at greg fps and i'll respond to you as quickly as i can because i do take pride in my guides and i want to make sure that they're easy to understand and really good for you guys to be able to complete these easter eggs yourself if you have any questions let me know also you can leave your playstation link down below if you're trying to find other players or your xbox or pc it doesn't matter what platform if you guys are trying to get other players you can comment that down below as well because you do need to do all these in public matches with four players so it's good to have four players that you can actually talk to rather than just random people and also guys if you did enjoy the video please drop a like it really helps my videos get out there for more people to see and also guys subscribe if you're new and if you do end up subscribing let me know down below that would be greatly appreciated all right guys so my name is greg fps and this has been the full easter egg guide for the tortured path thank you guys for watching have an amazing day and i'll see you guys in the next video peace out